Good morning. We are now on the video record. Today this is, is the Friday, November service. 7th, 2014, uh, at 1034 a.m. We are here at the Law Office of Moran, Wallace, and Higgins for the purpose of taking video deposition of Nicholas Galbo um, in case number 14-10028-CIV. Trevor Imers versus City of Key West et al. U.S. District Court, Southern District of Florida. The court reporter is Suzanne X and the videographer is Roderick Pratt, both of U.S. Legal Support. Would all counsel please state their appearance for the record and then I will swear in the witness. David Paul Horan, Darren Horan, and Bob McKee for the plaintiff Imers. Hudson Gill on behalf of Officer Galbo, the City of Key West, and the other individual officers with the exception of Officer LeVay. Lyman Reynolds on behalf of Officer LeVay. Would you raise your hand please? Do you swear from the testimony you're giving in this cause will be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. Officer Galbo, please state your name and your business address. Officer Nicholas Galbo, 1604 North Roosevelt Boulevard, Key West, Florida, 33040. It's amazing. You all live in the same place. <laughs> uh, here's what I need from you. I want to find out if you've ever had your deposition taken. Yes. When? Not for this case, but I've had depositions. How many times? Several. I don't know an exact number. By whom? Uh, public defender, private attorneys, and state attorney. Who was the pri private attorney? I don't recall his name. How long ago? At least a year. Um, I tend to talk fairly slow because okay. I'm from Georgia, but uh, if you don't understand what I'm asking, if you have any doubt in your mind, please ask me to please restate it or whatever so that you've got it clear as to what I'm asking, okay? Yes. And if you don't indicate that you have a problem with it, I'm going to assume that you understood my question. Okay. And if I ask you a question that can be answered yes or no, please answer it yes or no, and then if it requires an explanation you can, but it, if it's something that should be answered yes or no, please do so. Is okay. that fair? Yes. All right. Um, what's your age? 31. And how long have you been a policeman? Just over five years. And prior to that time, what did you do? Uh, restaurant manager. Where? A uh, restaurant in Boca Raton, Florida. And uh, are you married? No. Uh, when did you move down here? Just prior to becoming a uh, officer with Key West. Okay. Just over five years ago. And what's your rank? Patrol officer. Uh, do you know whether any officers on the Key West Police Department have their own personal, like, stun guns, the ones that you can buy in the gun shops? Check to the form of the question. Joy. You can answer if you can. Uh, not that I'm aware of, no. You've never seen anybody carrying one? No. Okay. Um, there was a taser video that came out of Officer Levette's taser. Are you aware of that? I have not heard or seen any of Officer Levette's taser video or audio. Okay. Have you heard about it? Just speculation of what other people have said, but that's about it. Okay. Have you talked to any officers of the Key West Police Department with regard to uh, Officer Levette's taser video and audio? No. Have you talked with anybody about Officer Levette's taser video and audio? No. Um, in that video and audio, he states, quote, we're going to have to do supplements. Let's to get to, let's, I'm sorry, exact words, quote, we're all going to have to get let me try again. Quote, we're all going to have to do supplements. Let's get together and work that shit out. Close quote. 
Are you aware of him having ever said that? Check to the Check form to the of the form. question. No. Did he say anything like that to you? Not that I'm aware of, no. Would you remember if he came to you and said, hey, listen, we've got to do supplements. Let's get together and do them together so that they're all together? Probably. To Join. Probably? Probably, yes. If he had said something to me like that. You'd remember it? I might remember it, yes. But you, but you don't remember him saying anything like that to you? No. Okay. Um, he also says on that video, uh, I've gotten about a million texts um, as to what happened. And then he says, and this is a direct quote, Gabe killed him, close quote. Are you aware that that's on his video? Check Jeff. Or on his audio? Join. Join. No. Do you know of anything that would refute that statement? Check to inform. Join. No. Also on his video it says, and this is Officer Levette talking about Mr. Amers, quote, he has blunt force trauma on the head from me, close quote. Did you ever ha hear anybody make that statement? Check to the form of the question. John? No. Had, do you remember anybody ever saying that he died of blunt force trauma? Check to the form of the question. John? No. Do you remember anybody having said that he died because he was tased? Check to the form of the question. John? No. I'm going to hand you exhibit number 13 and ask if you have seen that. <clears throat> yes. Okay. Um, when's the last time you read it or saw it? Uh, Prior to this deposition. Today? Yes. Okay. Uh, did you bring a copy with you? No, I did not. I left it in the car. Okay. Did it have any markings on it? No, mine was my copy of it. From okay. But you hadn't put any markings on it? No. So it's identical to what you're looking at? Other than the sticker? Yes. Okay. Uh, what's the date uh, that it was actually um, when, when, when the... Uh, uh, you did your supplemental uh, on that case? This date is dated as December 3rd, 2013. Okay. And that's a supplemental narrative, correct? Yes. Okay. Why did you do that? I'm just going to instruct the witness that any communications you have between you and your attorney, either me or through the PBA, are privileged, so don't disclose the contents of the communications. Okay. We were instructed to by our attorney to write these report. We were instructed by our attorneys with the PBA to do the supplemental at the request and at the order of the department. Okay. Now, this purports to be a supplemental narrative, correct? Yes. What is it supplementing? The original case. Um, from the incident that I would believe was initiated by Officer Seltzer. Okay, had you read Officer Seltzer's uh, narrative before you supplemented it? No, I did not. Then how do you know what you were supplementing? Check to the form of the question. Troy. My supplemental has only information that I did and that I'm aware of. When you got your order from your commanding officer, did he order that you put down all the individuals you remember at the scene? No. What did he order? Just that we write a supplemental as to what happened and what our involvement was. Only your involvement? Yes. Now, since you've read it today and you have it there in front of you, is all of that correct? Check for Go ahead. Yes. Is it all in your own words? 
Yes. Now, did you prepare it? Yes. I wrote Are it. you a typist? No. How did you prepare it? How did you get it printed? Typed it up in our computer system that we have for our report managers, um, then printed it out from there. And you typed it? I typed it in my computer, yes. In your computer or in... My department-owned computer, yes. Okay. Where is that located? Uh, my patrol vehicle. Oh, it's in your patrol vehicle. Mm -hmm. Okay. When you typed it up, then did you send it in to the, uh, to the, uh, to the um, QS Police Department? Yes. Is it under a particular file? Did you have a certain file name for that supplemental uh, narrative? No, the narrative was typed up in the actual report manager itself, that the program specifically. Once I completed my supplemental, uh, it was sent to the patrol, um, the sergeant's box, and the supervisor's box for them to review. Okay. On your computer in your patrol car, do you put it into a file? No, everything was in that one program. There's not a specific file in Windows or a file folder that it goes to. Okay. So all of those words on that supplemental narrative are your own? Yes. Look at the first paragraph. Okay. And those are your words, correct? They were what we were instructed to write. By whom? Our attorneys. Okay. Did your commanding officer tell you to put that paragraph in there? I do not remember if they said specifically, but I know we, I was instructed by my attorney to put that paragraph. Okay. Did he hand you something? Uh, again, you can answer the question to the extent you don't disclose specifically what your attorney was telling you. My attorney told me to specifically put this information into my supplemental report with my actual incident or with my supplemental information. Okay. Did he give you a, uh, a pre-type thing that, that, that has those words so that you could type it in? Yes. Okay. And then you typed it in? Yes. Okay. Did Officer Levette help you prepare your supplemental narrative? No, he did not. Join. No. Not in no way, shape, or form did he help you prepare it. Is that correct? Correct. correct. Correction form. Did anyone suggest any of the wording in the second paragraph? That's exhibit number is it thirteen? Yes, thirteen. Exhibit number thirteen in that second paragraph. Did anybody suggest any of the wording to you? Not that I remember, no. Okay. You state that at 8.20 a.m. on Thanksgiving, November 28th, that you were on patrol. Is that correct? Yes. Is that what it says? Okay. How did you come up with 8.20? believe that was the time listed in my, um, the, our CAD call is when we were put on the call or when the call initiated. On the CAD call? believe so, yes. Okay. So you reviewed the uh, CAD calls? Yes. To prepare this? Yes. Oh, okay. Did you review any of the other CAD calls? No. So the only time you used the CAD call was to come up with the 8.20 a.m. on Thanksgiving, November 28th. Is that correct? Yes. And that's the only thing you used it for? Yes. Did you review any of the other CAD calls that were listed when you reviewed uh, and, and came up with this 8.20 a.m.? No. And would that have been on the day that it was prepared? The 8.20 would be on the day of November 28th. Okay. The day of the incident. But when you reviewed the CAD calls, that would be on what date? The exact date, I do not know. 
It would probably have been done when I wrote the report on December 3rd. When All I was right. writing my report, I would have pulled up what my <coughs> times were. Okay, and what time on December 3rd? According to the printout here, the incident heading, this date was date report. This date was prepared on December 3rd, 2013, at 1019. Okay. Had you talked to anybody prior to doing that that suggested any of the wording in the second paragraph? Check to the form. Join. No. So from the time you got that 8.20 a.m. call to when you arrived at the Southernmost Beach Cafe, how long did that take? I don't have specific times on here. I don't, do not know the exact time. I could tell you within minutes. How could you tell me? Just based on everything that was happening. I know it was a fluid going call. Um, several minutes. After several. It, several uh, minutes more after. than 10, less than 10? Probably less than 10. Okay. And how did you get to the Southernmost Beach Cafe? I drove in my patrol car. Along what streets? Um, inbound on Truman Avenue to Simonton Street. Once I got to Simonton Street, I believe I made a left and was heading southbound on Simonton. Uh, run parallel to Duval Street, mm -hmm. took Simonton Street down to South Street, South made a right heading inbound to the one block over to Duval and South to where the Southernmost Beach Cafe is located. Okay, when you pulled up, that would have been on South Duval, correct? Yes. And you would have been uh, on South Duval, south of the intersection of Duval and South Street, correct? Yes. How many police cars were in front of you when you pulled up? I do not remember. Were there more than one? I do not know. Were you the first one at the scene? No, I was not. Were there any other police cars there? I know there was at least one car in front of me. Okay. Did you consult the dispatcher log when you were setting up your timeline? Only to pull up the, I believe the 820, when I uh, started responding to the call. And that would have been on the 3rd, correct? The 3rd of December? Yes, when I wrote this uh, supplemental report. Okay. So approximately what time was it when you got out of your car at the Beach Cafe? Do not know. Sometime after 8.20 a.m. Okay. You say within 10 minutes of that? I would assume so, yes. Okay. So um, when you got out of your car, which way did you walk? South. Were you on the, on, on the street or were you on the sidewalk? Initially, I was on the street walking, and then I crossed over onto the uh, the sidewalk and then onto the beach area by the southernmost beach cafe. Okay, let's go through what you observed when you first got there. Um, you were facing south with your car, correct? Yes. Was your ICOP on? I believe so. Did you receive an order to turn it on from dispatch? Not from dispatch, no. Who did you get the order to turn it on from? I believe it was our supervisor at the time, advised over our uh, communications radio, make sure everyone was recording. Okay, and who was your supervisor at the time? At that time it was Sergeant, uh, Sergeant Zamora. Okay. Have you ever reviewed your ICOP? No, I have not. Did you turn your ICOP over to the sergeant. I do not have ICOP. I have a coband system in my vehicle, mm -hmm. um, and all that is done electronically via Wi-Fi and on the city servers. So it's always on and recording into the city servers. Is that correct? Check, Check to the, the question. To my understanding. 
Okay, it's so you to don't be. have to you don't have to download it or or send it. It just the Coban actually transmits it to the city servers. Correct. Check to the form of the question. Yes, when it is within an area that it will transmit. Um, example is the the police department. Mm -hmm. um, it will automatically connect to the Wi-Fi network and is supposed to download from our in-car to the department server. And it does it automatically? Check to the form of the question. Yes. Okay. So you walked first down Duval Street south then you curved across, across the sidewalk, and onto the beach area. Is that correct? Yes. How many officers were within 10 feet of Mr. Imers when you first saw Mr. Imers? Do not know. Do you know of any officers that were within 10 feet of Mr. Imers when you got onto the beach area? There were officers with Mr. Imers on the beach. Who and how many? I do not know. You don't? No. Do you know um, Officer Levitt? Yes, I work with him. Um, was he there? I know at one point he was there, yes. What about Gabe? Officer Garrido, yes, he was there at some point. Okay, at some point. Was he there when you got there? I do not know or recall. Was Mr. Eimers there? Yes, I remember seeing him. Okay. Um, do you remember who was actually touching Mr. Imers when you first arrived? Turn to the form of the question. No. Was anybody touching Mr. Imers when you first arrived? I don't remember who was physically interacting with Mr. Imers upon my arrival. Do you remember my question? Yes. Was anyone touching Mr. Imers when you first arrived? Objection form. Sure. Ask and answer. Yes or no? Do not recall. No. Do not. So know. you don't know that anybody was touching him? Do not know or recall. Uh, <coughs> did you make any kind of an initial report to anyone prior to December 3rd? No. And so, in doing your supplemental report, you'd never reviewed the original report that you were supplementing. Is that correct? Objection form. Join. Correct. Was anybody with you on December 3rd when you prepared your supplemental narrative? Objection form. Join. No. Let's get back to you getting out of your car and walking out onto the beach. Uh, when you first saw Mr. Imers, where were his hands? I do not remember or recall where his hands were. What was he doing? Do not remember. You don't remember, do you, could you see his hands? Can't tell you, don't know. Officer Garrido, do you know where he was when you first saw him? No, I do not. Was he standing? Objection form. Sure. Can't, can't tell you, don't know. Have you always been this forgetful? Objection form. Join. Move to strike. You're under oath. I'm well Same. aware of that. Objection. And you don't remember where Mr. Garrido was when you first saw him? Objection. Nope. And you don't remember whether he was kneeling or standing? Nope. What about Officer Levette? Was he kneeling or standing when you first saw him? Do not remember. Do not know. Have you ever been diagnosed with short-term memory? Objection. Problems. Form. Move to strike. Nope. 
do you remember any officers being on the restaurant side of Mr. Eimer's body? I don't remember where anyone was positioned. Do you remember any officers being on the restaurant side of Mr. Eimer's body? That's a yes or no. You can explain it. Objection form. Join. No. Do you remember uh, any officers being on the left side of Mr. Eimer's body, which would be towards Duval Street? Check to the form of the question. I don't know where officers were positioned. I know that there were officers there because I obviously relieved somebody. Okay. But, but who was positioned where? I'm not asking you who. I'm said, were you aware of any officers on the left-hand side of Mr. Eimer's body when you, when you were there? Objection form. So do not know specifically as to where they were positioned, no. Did you actually approach Mr. Eimer's? <coughs> yes. What side of his body did you approach from? I came from his left side. The okay. Roadway. When you got to Mr. Eimer's, what officer was beside you, either on your left or right? Do not know. So when you got to Mr. Eimer's, what did you do to him? Just a formal question. question. When I arrived on scene, officers were interacting with Mr. Eimer's. Um, I noticed that Mr. Eimer's was dirty and not very clean. Um, at that point, and I also noticed officers did not have any gloves or any equipment or personal protective equipment on. At that point, I put gloves on and relieved, I believe it was Officer Calvert, Thaddeus Calvert, who was controlling Mr. Eimer's legs from kicking because he did not have any gloves or anything like that on. Okay. How many officers had gloves on other than you? Object to the form of the question. I don't know who else put gloves on or who had gloves on. So what exactly did you do with regard to Mr. Eimer's once you got there? Once I arrived on scene and once I actually started interacting with Mr. Eimer's, I relieved Officer Thaddeus Calvert, who did not have gloves on, who was controlling Mr. Eimer's legs from kicking up. Um, I put my gloves on, relieved him, and controlled Mr. Eimer's legs from kicking back up at any officers. Okay. So you were at his feet, correct? Yes. Were you kneeling? I'm not sure how I was down. If I was bent over, kneeling, I don't remember. Was Officer Calvert, when you, when you relieved him, was he, was he kneeling or standing? I don't know if he was kneeling, bent over, or standing. I just know he was controlling his legs. Okay. Were there officers on Mr. Eimer's left arm? I do not know who was at or who were was there. Were there officers? There I didn't ask you who. Were there officers on his left arm? Do not know. Were there any officers on his right arm? Do not know. So how were they keeping him down if all you're doing is controlling his legs? Wasn't, form. wasn't sure. looking at his arms or upper body, was concerned with his legs from kicking. Okay. Did you ever touch Mr. Eimer's head? No. Did you ever touch his neck? No. Did you ever touch his back? No. Did you ever touch his arms? Mm. Well, I took him out of handcuffs. when you took him out of handcuffs. You're the one that took him out? Myself and I believe it was Sergeant Zamora took him out of the handcuffs. So I touched his hands and his probably his arm area to get the handcuff and actually get the key in and unlock it. What was Mr. Eimer's position relative to the sand when you did that? At that point he was sitting up. Sitting up? Or was leaned up, yes, sitting up. Okay. On his butt? Yes. Okay. And um, was he struggling? No. Was he, were his legs hobbled? No. 
did his legs ever get hobbled? No, we had started to and were unable to. Why or were stopped. you unable to? We weren't unable, we stopped. Why? We decided to stand Mr. Reimers up and try to walk him over to the patrol vehicle and secure him inside a vehicle and off the beach. Was he, sti was he still struggling? When we were trying to put the hobble on, yes. Before you got the hobble on, did you did he stop struggling? He, uh, I don't remember when he stopped struggling. Do you remember one of the officers saying, "Hey, he stopped breathing. He stopped breathing." Somebody announced that he was not responding. At that point is when we rolled Mr. Reimers over, and myself and Sergeant Zamora began taking the handcuffs off. Okay, so when you say he rolled him over, at the time that you went to roll him over, what was his position with regard to the sand? He was initially prone out on the sand. Face down? Not sure if his face was down, but his stomach was in the was on the sand. Did you see any sand on his face? No. Ever? No. Did you ever see his face? Yes. Did you see any sand in his eyes? No. Nose? No. Mouth? No. Any blood? No. Not that I recall. Did you ever see any officer that had blood on his hands? No. Are you aware that he was bleeding from his left ear? No. Section four. When you were holding his legs to get the hobble on, is that when you heard somebody say he's not breathing? Section four. Joy. At some point it was said. Was I still holding his legs? I don't remember if I was still holding his legs, if we were still trying to get the hobble on him, or when it was said. So when you were holding Mr. Eimer's legs, was that when he became unresponsive? Jack to the form of the question. Joy. I don't know when Mr. Eimer's became unresponsive. How about reviewing your, your statement? Okay. Does it say anything about when he became unresponsive? Objection four. Join. According to this, it says as the subject was being lifted, he became unresponsive. Is that your m memory today? That it was only when he was being lifted that he became unresponsive? Objection four. Join. That's when I'm aware of it. Okay, and those were your words, correct? What, this report? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you didn't consult with anybody about it? No. You said we were trying to control his legs and put the hobble on. Who's we? When did I say we? In your testimony just a little while ago. Form. Join. I'm not saying your supplement, I'm saying what you just I'm, testified. I'm just looking to make sure. Okay. Okay. Remember the question? No. Can you ask it again? <clears throat> question. You said we were trying to control his legs and put the hobble on. Who is we? Me and another officer. What officer I do not know was actually assisting with me, but I know it was not me. Just there was multiple officers out there. Okay. Who was it that you relieved because he wasn't wearing gloves? That's your prior testimony. That was Officer Thaddeus Calvert. And were, was he helping you with regard to the hobble? I do not remember. When you relieved him, where was he? I do not know where he went. Was he next to you or up towards the head of Mr. Eimers? Objection form. Join. No idea where another officer went or positioned himself. But you said you relieved him. 
Isn't that correct? Yes. Where did you relieve him from? Objection form. Ask and answer. The right right side of Mr. Eimer's legs. Thank you. Is your memory coming back? Objection form. Move to strike inappropriate comment of counsel. And this My witness has already time. testified. He's answered that way before. That's a legitimate question, counsel. It's not. <laughs> Do you remember conducting an interview with Captain Smith's wife, Kathy Smith, on February 20th, 19, uh, 2014? Don't remember the date, but I remember conducting an interview with her. Okay. Did you have any help with your interview with Miss Smith? No. Did you receive any help from anyone during your February 20th interview? Object to the form of the question. John. Help with what? With your testimony to Kathy Smith. No. Was it under oath? Yes. Have you reviewed it? Yes. Is it correct? Objection, objection form. Join. Yes. Is it factual? Same objection. Join. Yes. Did you see anyone attempting to sit Mr. Eimers up? Check to the form of the question. No. When you got there, did you see several officers attempting to put handcuffs on uh, Mr. Eimers? Who is performing CPR on Mr. Eimers? Initially, CPR was started by uh, was Officer Seltzer and Officer Henry DeValle. And then paramedics were arrived on scene and took over. Okay. And how were they administering CPR? Chest compressions and a department provided ambu bag for breathing. Were you aware of any weapons being displayed during the time that you arrived on the scene and until uh, Mr. Eimers was transported? Check to the form of the question. Joy. I did not see weapons displayed at Mr. Eimer's or um, who had a weapon out. Only weapon I did notice was a AR-15 was slung over Officer DeValle's shoulder, was slung down, and I observed that when he was doing chest compressions for Mr. Eimer's. Okay, did you ever see the video? No. You've never seen the video? Snippets of it. Snippets of it. Of what? a video that was posted on YouTube. 
Okay. Did you see the YouTube video? Yeah, just clips of it. Just okay. those little pieces. Did you see anybody with an AR-15 pointing at Ms. Drymers? Not that I noticed or was looking for. That video is from far back. I can't tell what's going on. What were you looking for when you saw the video? Honestly, not looking for anything. Just saw it because it was there and said Key West Police. The narrative given to given to Kathy Smith on the 20th of February states, quote, Officer Galbo, along with several other officers, attempted to place the hobble on the suspect but were unable to fully secure the device when the officers noted that the su suspect was unresponsive. Is that correct? Check to the form of the question. John? Yes. Okay. And so when you noted that he was unresponsive, what was the position of Mr. Imers? I do not recall. I have it in here that I recall, according to my report, um, when he was being lifted, he became unresponsive. Okay. So they were lifting him while they were putting him out. <coughs> so, were they trying to lift him when he became unresponsive, or was it when you were trying to put the hobble on him that he became unresponsive? Check to the form. form. I honestly do not know. Do you see that there's some inconsistency between trying to lift him and also put a hobble on? Objection for Join. A lot of it's happening simultaneously. Simultaneously? Mm hmm How do you put a hobble on if somebody's trying to lift somebody? Objection for Join. Not going to slide something under someone's legs if they're pressed up against or laying on the sand and there's no way to get it under. You're going to have to naturally lift somebody's legs up slightly to put a hobble on. Oh, okay. And if you lift the legs up, then the body's still laying prone on the stomach on the sand, correct? Objection form. Join. I don't know who was at the body or who was lifting the body or when the body was being lifted or rolled over or moved or set that up. That what I asked. Objection to the form of question. When you are lifting the legs up to put the hobble on your mm -hmm. testimony. Yes. Objection form. Is the body, not the legs, but the body, still laying on the sand, stomach down? Objection form. Join. Do not know. You do realize you're under oath, correct? Jackson Ford. Well, huh? well aware of that, yes. Okay. And so far, all the testimony you've given in this deposition is true and correct to your own personal knowledge, correct? Judge the form of the question. Yes. Do you know how Mr. Imers was secured so that his wrists weren't moving so that Garrido's finger could be extracted? Section 4. Join. Do not know. Do you remember Officer Garrido's finger being caught in the handcuff? I was not there when that may or may not have happened. So you don't know how Officer Garrido could get Mr. Imers to hold still while attempting to remove his finger, correct? Objection form. Join. Do not know what Officer Garrido did. You can see Officer Garrido's reporter ask him what he did pertaining to it. I can only attest to what I did. Okay. Did you ever see a taser in the hands of any officer? Objection form. Join. No. Now. Being very conscious of the fact that all of your testimony has been absolutely under oath and true, I'm going to ask you to look at Plaintiff's Exhibit Number 14. This is a uh, supplemental report by Gary Lee Levette. 
Okay. I want you to look that over, and I want you to read it. Before you answer any questions, I want you to read it. Not the first paragraph, because that was all the same on all of them. The second paragraph, I want you to read it. Okay. Have you read it? Yes. I want you to read the second paragraph of yours, which is number 13, Exhibit 13. Go ahead and read it. Okay. Now I'll ask you a question. Okay. Now you've read your second paragraph on your supplemental affidavit. You've read Mr. Um, Levette's second paragraph on his supplemental. And you have sworn testimony right now, today, that you got no help from Mr. Lovett in preparing your supplemental narrative. My question to you is this. Do you want to change your sworn testimony? No. You don't. Nope. So it's a total coincidence between that paragraph and that paragraph that they have exactly the same punctuation, exactly the same wording, and it's a, just a coincidence, Ch right? Checked in the form of the question, argumentative. It's argumentative. It's also very determinative as to the validity of your testimony. Objection. You're telling me, is that a coincidence? Counsel. Is it counsel? a coincidence that they're the same? Council, go ahead and make your objection. You need to get yourself under control, Council. I'm under control. I just don't like people lying to me. Objection form okay. to strike right. inappropriate okay. comment of Council. Well, we'll let the judge and let the ju jury decide whether there's such a remarkable similarity between the two that it's absolutely humanly impossible to duplicate those paragraphs without having consulted with each other. Objection. Move to strike inappropriate comment of counsel. Join. Now then, are you going to tell me that the similarity between those two paragraphs is a coincidence? Objection form. Ask and answer. It's yes or Join. no. You going to not yell at me? No, and I'm speak to me like... Oh, okay. Okay. I'll do it real slow, Georgia style. There's two paragraphs there. You've read them both. Yes, I have. Are they remarkably similar? Check to the follow. Join. Officer Lett was my training officer. Most of my reports and how I write reports were based on how Officer Levette wrote his reports. And you got no help from Officer Levette in writing your report, correct? That is Check correct. Check the form. Join. Do you know whether Officer Levette used your report to write his? Check the form. form. Join. I cannot attest to what Officer Levette did or how okay. he wrote his report. What's the date on Officer Levette's upper right hand corner? His is on December 2nd. <coughs> and yours is on? December 3rd. 
So it'd be pretty hard for him to use yours, wouldn't it? Excellent. Okay. How about reading the last sentence of both of them? First, your last sentence. Read it out loud. First aid CPR was administered, as well as the use of an AED, until firefighters and paramedics arrived on scene and, transport, and transported the subject to Lower Keys Medical Center. And would you read the last sentence in Mr. Levette's? First aid CPR was administered, as well as the use of an AED, until firefighters and paramedics arrived on scene and transported the subject to Lower Keys Medical Center. When you talk about somebody being in the prone position, how do you state it in your, in your uh, supplemental report? Objection. Form. Join. When I arrived on scene, the subject was proned out in this, on the sand. How's proned spelled? P-R-O-N-E-D. Okay, look at Levette's. How is prone spelled? Deduction form. Join. It appears it's the exact same place. P-R-O-N-E-D. Okay. So it's just a, is it a, Coincidence that you misspell the same word? Section point. Join. Yes. Then you know it's misspelled. Have him verify that he has hmm. no evidence to refute those things. Have you ever read any of the reports? taken at the scene from independent witnesses? No. In one of the reports, there is a uh, lady named Joelle Grassy, and she says, I saw a taser being displayed and pushed against the right side of the subject's neck. Do you have any way of refuting that statement? Check the action form. Join. I don't even know who that person is or have any idea what they're talking about. I didn't ask you who they were. I said she, her, her statement to the police department was this. She saw a taser being displayed and pushed against the right side of the subject's neck. My question is, do you have any way to refute that statement? Objection. Point. Join. No. Then there is an interview with Mr. Barrow. He's an independent witness to this, taken that day. It says, quote, He saw something with which an officer was hitting him, meaning Mr. Dimers, in the chest and pushed against his chest. Do you have any way of refuting that statement? Check to the form of the question. John. No. Then it says, he said a diner at the restaurant who claimed to be a voluntary police officer from New York exclaimed they were tasing excessively. Do you have any way of refuting that statement? Check the form. Joy. No. No further questions. No questions. I have no questions for the witness. We will read and take a copy of its order. Off the video record at 11.29 a.m. We're out here today to ensure our natural rights are respected by those who swore an oath to support, protect, and defend the rights of the people. The purpose of all interactions is to peacefully promote government accountability and transparency. Please like, share, and subscribe so this message can reach as many people as possible. I implore you to peacefully seek redress to any and all of your grievances. This is a public service.